Hello and welcome to the Mobile World Congress here in Barcelona. Yes, this is how we'd idly be wanting to get around here at this iconic event. I'm at one of the booths, which has been quite a crowd puller with this VR shopper. It looks great from the outside, but it's a nice little VR experience on the inside. But there's a lot more happening on the show. Of course, we're talking about how 6G is the conversation here at Mobile World Congress. Also connected devices, ecosystems, and of course the metaverse and the buzzword of 2023, artificial intelligence. All that and a lot more on this Tech Today special from Barcelona. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi saying, let's get started. Well, this is an ordinary phone. This is what phones and devices of the future are gonna look like. A rollable tech, a proof of concept here at the Lenovo Motorola stand. Of course, we've seen all sorts of foldables on the show, but you can see how that display is rolling right in front of your eyes. And it's happening here with their tablet and keyboard concept as well. I think it's absolutely crazy. We'll get you more on the show about how this tech works. But for now, this is the first look from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Lenovo's rollable tech in all its splendor. The Motorola riser concept that we hope will soon be a reality. What makes this phone really special is the minute you give it a double tap on that side, the rollable display now expands to this. Tap it twice again. And like that, just like magic, it's back to this traditional form. Now, there's a lot of use cases for something like this. I think rollable displays are something which will work in the future. We've seen how foldables are really hotting up as a space, even in India and on tech today. We've seen the Oppo Find N2 Flip and the Samsung Galaxy Flip 4, the Fold. There's all sorts of devices here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, but we have this concept phone in the flesh on tech today. There's also a few other things that this phone can do. For instance, if you flick it twice like this, and now it's just, well, the rear camera, and I want to suddenly start using the front camera. There you go, I flick it again, and here's the front camera. And if you notice, when I did that, this display was untouched. It rolled further out there, the camera is revealed, as is the earpiece. You flick it back again, and there you go. Almost seamlessly, very, very smooth output. I think they've done a fantastic job. Given this is a concept phone, we can only hope that the other booths are actually watching this with bated breath and learning a thing or two from Motorola. Look, Motorola got it right with the Razer phones back in the day. They really were the talk of the town with their flip devices. And now with this, the Razer concept, I think they're on to something special. Obviously, this is just a concept phone. A lot of things will change. For instance, what is this display at the back going to be used for? Because this is also part of this particular device. What kind of cameras will you put in it? What chipset will be in it? All these things would be decided in due course, in due time. But this for now, <laughs> double tap and enjoy this concept phone, which really might just be a thing of the future. This literally is Motorola's back to the future moment. And we're really impressed on Tech Today. We're here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and I have with me the OnePlus 11 concept phone. Now it uses a new sort of tech. It's called Active Cryo Flux. It's an active mechanism that is used in gaming PCs to actually liquid cool the phones. Your phones get hot when you're gaming and that seems to be the future. Even with OnePlus's R&D team, they think a lot of the gaming that we are doing even in India is going to move to smartphones. And that's why you want your phone cooled and charging in record time. And if it looks good while all of that is happening, well then it's not bad news either, right? It's got this LED backlight over here, indicative of how the phone is using liquid cooling tech to ensure that the battery will charges in record time and stays cool while you're playing the next Battle Royale game. You know when you end up watching a 3D movie and you have to put those glasses on and a lot of people complain of a splitting headache. What if I told you that there's now the world's first eyewear-free 3D tablet 
technology. A company called ZTE is making this in China with Nubia. It's the ZTE Nubia Pad 3D, the world's first AI powered eyewear free 3D tablet. And I'll tell you how they do it. They do it using AI with these cameras. It's always good to cover good tech and I think this is very interesting. I'll tell you how the output is. Well, the minute you put any content on this particular tablet, you hit play and even if it's in 2D and you take a normal file, hit 3D, it processes in a matter of seconds and then you have at this angle only a fully 3D movie. How is it making it happen? Maybe you don't see it from this angle but you see it from this angle and that's your normal viewing angle with one face right here with facial recognition. These two cameras are making the magic happen so to speak. They also have a similar light field technology at the back if you want to use this to shoot content. That same technology exists at the back as well. That's not just for videos like this. What if you want to shoot a 3D photo? Well, this is the world's first AI-powered 3D tablet and you can do that as well. Go on the Leica cam, switch over the camera and we'll show you me and my camera crew right here and you can take a video or a 3D photo. Now, I don't know how much of it you can see but it is quite fascinating that this sort of product is now here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Also, although this is, well, a China product, it does ship globally. So in, come April, you'll be able to order this anywhere around the world. The world's first 3D eyewear free tablet. Interesting? Let me know. Well, speaking of showstoppers here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, I made a new friend, 177 centimeters tall. That's actually shorter than me, but he's standing on a pedestal. The Cyber One, a humanoid robot from Xiaomi comes along with the cyber dog right over there, a quadruped which can do quite a few neat tricks. But speaking about the cyber one, the humanoid, Xiaomi actually pipped Elon Musk and his tweets to making this humanoid robot which can recognize a bunch of expressions, emotions by human beings, has all sorts of AI and facial recognition tech inbuilt in it. But that's not all Xiaomi is working on. While this is a showstopper with everyone actually coming to the Xiaomi stall for this, this is what Xiaomi launched here in Barcelona. In fact, we were at the pre-launch event where we found out where this floating telephoto mechanism with this Leica lens, not just a gimmick, and I'll tell you more about that in a bit, but co-engineered with Leica, not just like the other brands who essentially are talking about color science and just some small little marketing partnership. The team that actually worked on this partnership did have an exclusive conversation with Tech Today where we wanted to ask them what they are doing with this device. An absolutely stellar camera. You're going to see a review very soon, but here's a few camera samples on the screen. You have a nice, neat little watermark. And whilst I'm talking, you have a cyber dog following me around. I think he's taken a liking for me. But that's not all. If you walk around the Xiaomi booth right over here, you see that they've been building on an ecosystem with a smart living room, a smart kitchen, and these are popular products all across the world. A smart workspace as well, something they've been talking about. Barring all the special edition phones and you know some of these interesting Redmi devices as well, is actually their mobility or their smart outdoors department where they've been speaking about an electric scooter. Now this is something that I think can be a game changer when brands start working on this in a wide scale way in India, but we'll need regulations to figure out how e-scooters being shared will actually work out. I think it's fascinating what's happening in the tech world. This has been one of the show-stopping moments at the Mobile World Congress. And of course, we have my dear friend, the cyber dog, saying hello to all the viewers of Tech Today. Here's another big launch at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and we have it exclusively for you on Tech Today. Come May or June, this is most likely going to light up the market back home in India. And you're seeing it first, the Techno Phantom We Fold here in the flesh. And the price has been revealed and that's really the showstopper. I'll tell you a little bit more about the specs of this device, but in terms of the price, 
at 79999 under 80000 rupees for early adopters that would be the guys who essentially pre-book it just to give you some perspective the only other fold that we've had on the show and in india is the samsung galaxy fold costs well an entire bucket load more for a device which is essentially the same form factor very different camera module right here honestly when you're holding it it looks and feels as premium as any other device we've had from the foldable line now we've shown you flip phones we've shown you rollable phones here as well and finally we have a foldable launch here as well a little bit more about the specs of the phone you have a five lens camera system a rear camera 50 megapixel main camera 50 megapixel telephoto a 30 megapixel wide angle and a 32 megapixel front camera sub screen main screen 16 megapixel camera well obviously this is a foldable so you can take a selfie like this and if you don't like that camera then you can always use this particular camera and then you also have a camera right here in terms of charging it comes with a 5000 mAh battery 45 watt supercharge it's a 5g device and most importantly it comes with an interface and an os which was built for foldables only 256 or 512 gigs of storage in terms of the ram you can add 9 gigs more of virtual ram and hope and we really expect this to be a snappy one it comes with obviously paddle window like the flex mode on the samsung split screen all sorts of things on this one device and of course it comes with a mediatek dimensity 9000 plus now that's different from the samsung galaxy fold which of course comes with the snapdragon 8 series chipset but this is an interesting launch for the indian market and come may april and may and maybe before that we will give you exclusive access to this foldable but first this is the first time you're seeing this on tech today This is paradise for a tech geek, the Lucid Air here at the Mobile World Congress. A very good looking car, 0 to 100 in under 2.7 seconds, 1,111 horsepower, nearly $150,000 in the US. We haven't seen this back home, but if you speak to Lucid, they're not comparing it to the Tesla, interestingly. They talk about comparing it to the EQS or even more premium cars out there in the market. But here's an exclusive first look of the Lucid Air at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. There's a lot of things happening here at the Congress. EVs, not too many. We've seen a Tesla. There's one parked right over there as well. And then, of course, you have a Lucid here as well. There's more EVs at the Auto Expo and, of course, at CES Las Vegas. You know, some of the biggest conversations in the world of technology start here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And the change makers, the thought leaders are all here under one roof in the heart of Barcelona. One of them is here with me, Rajan Magaria. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to be here again. It's always a pleasure to have him on the show. But a lot of the conversations that start here, like I said, end up dictating the future of technology for the years to come. A couple of years were subdued here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona for obvious reasons. It's back, back with a bang. The last time we met and the last time conversations were happening here was all about 5G. Now, I hear a lot of murmurs of 6G as well. Do you think where we are placed in India and your understanding of the Asia and the India business, are we ready for that transition? We've just gotten into deployment of 5G. Where does the 6G journey begin? I think that's an interesting question. Uh, and I would say that this is that place where you would see the first of the glimpses and uh, some form of what is going to come over the next few years. Mm -hmm. So I consider MWC as that one destination for anybody to go to look at what you should expect in the next few years. Yeah. Now, obviously, the cadence of any G is always typically around 10 years. We are in the fourth year of a 5G. So mm -hmm. that way, by a by a simple cadence perspective, 6G is not expected for another six years yeah. or seven years. Having said that, quite a few things which you would, as you walk around the Qualcomm booth and you get to see in terms of the technology we are, we are showcasing, these are early technology demonstrations which eventually could become a part of the 6G definition. Mm -hmm. right? 
5G is here for the last four years. What you are going to see is a, quite a few more years of 5G yeah. taking up the scale. I consider 5G as two parts, a phase one and a phase two. We are probably at the end of the phase one of 5G deployments globally. And for India, we are probably starting 5G now. Mm -hmm. So over the next two to three years, you will see the scaling up of 5G across the globe mm -hmm. as most operators have scaled. And then additions on, on to 5G, like millimeter wave, are going to see a ramp up in the second phase of the 5G. Here at MWC and all around the world, for the, since November, I think the last time that we met, has been generative artificial intelligence. Generative AI, chat GPT being spoken about all over the world. How much of an impact do you think that will have on, on the workflow on the tech side, on, on exactly how a tech company operates, on, on how our jobs will pan out in the next few months? I think, I mean, I am so happy about the generative AI. The reason I'm happy is it's the same way. You know, I mean, because we are in Mobile World Congress, I'll give you an example that 95, 96, uh, if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, India was one of the most highest cost per minute call and incoming and outgoing both charge 16 rupees a minute. Mm -hmm. And those blank calls, blind calls, call me back. And I was from that upbringing and I land in Hong Kong airport. There was this bank of uh, phones, but people were talking on a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I said, this is an industry you need to be in. The convenience was 10 steps away. Mm -hmm. People were talking on mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Mobile phone automated the public phone systems. Correct. It automated everything that came along. And you know, I mean, I don't have to describe to you whether it's a health tech, fintech, Absolute. media tech, whatever device it is. Absolute disruption. Now, to me, it did not take away jobs. It created jobs. Now, this is exactly what I think about generative AI. That the use cases are there. And the more they get defined, that means more jobs it will create. Mm -hmm. Technology is the heart of everything. And that's a brilliant answer as always, CP, sir. But when we're talking about jobs, I know we've discussed this often as a theme much before the onset of the tech winter. Now we're in the heart of it in Chile, Barcelona. It snowed here at Mobile World Congress. But since we are in the midst of a tech winter, do you see us, you know, they say at the end of a storm is a golden sky. When do we get to see that golden sky, if ever? I know you're an optimist, but I'd love to get your view on that. So I don't even know why you call it a winter. Mm -hmm. I mean, three weeks ago was a leap IT conference in Saudi Arabia. I promise you that there I met colleagues who had to stay three hours away because there was not a hotel available in Riyadh. Their whole conference center had to be shut down at four o'clock because they could not take any more visitor. You are here in Mobile World Congress. I mean, I know it's chilly outside, but reality is a warmth inside. That's true. The number of people. I mean, I was so proud when anti-phishing software is launched by Tanla yesterday in this Mobile World Congress. That a sandstorm, which is a code name, as I told you. Yes. But a sandstorm or for network operations .ai, Yeah. We are launching a product here. So I don't think it's a tech winter. I think, in my opinion, is the opportunities are just opening up and the level of enthusiasm. I mean, I promise you that every time I come to Mobile World Congress, my battery goes 110%. Well, all work and no play on this show at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona makes me a very dull guy. That's why we now are going to get into the 9Bot Go-Kart Pro from Segway and hope to have some fun. Well, it actually comes with four speakers inside, which are giving you the sound effect. There's a nine bot self-balancing Segway included with this. It's won a bunch of design awards. I can't wait to actually use this on a Mumbai track. But for now, that's about all the time we have on this show because all work and no play 
makes Jack a dull boy. This is your host, Ayush Alabadi, signing off from the Mobile World Congress. Until next week, adios. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.